Okay, in this video we're going to do a titration. So before we do a titration we have to some, have something that we want to measure the concentration of. So in this case we're going to make up a solution of unknown concentration by dissolving some sodium hydroxide pellets. So we put our hydroxide pellets, sodium hydroxide pellets into a beaker. We add not too small amount of water because it'll get warm if you add too little water and then we start to stir and we want to make sure it's completely dissolved before we put it into a volumetric flask it's very bad practice to put undissolved things into a volumetric flask because it's hard to stir them and so you end up with particles floating around so this takes a little while and you can see i've sped things up here stir 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 and eventually it will all go into solution and when it does we're going to take our funnel and we're going to use that to transfer the liquid into the volumetric flask. Since we're making up an unknown concentration, it doesn't really matter whether we transfer everything, but it's good practice to uh, quantitatively transfer it. So you can see we wash off the glass rod, and then we very carefully wash out the beaker three to four times to make sure that all of the material has been transferred across. Then we wash down our funnel, and then we fill the volumetric flask most of the way to the line by pouring liquid in. At this stage then, we slow things down and we have to make sure that we get it exactly to the line. So, like in other things where you're making measurements, you wanna make sure there's no parallax and we're using a pass pipette so that we can add in the liquid drop by drop by drop. So, when I say there's no parallax, you'll see on the vol volumetric flask that the marking goes all the way around the edge. And you'll know there's no parallax if you're looking on from the edge, about here, and you can't see the other side of it. And when you look, al look along from the edge, like so, you won't uh, be able to see both sides of the ring, unlike the video camera, which is not level with the measurement line. So very slowly, drip by drip by drip, we make it up to the line until the bottom of the meniscus is exactly at that line. And at that stage then, we put in the stopper, give the stopper a little twist, and while holding the stopper in place, we're gonna turn the flask upside down about 20 times. There's no point in shaking the flask, because if you shake the flask, it's not going to mix the material that's up in the neck of the flask. What you need to do is just keep turning it upside down and back and upside down and back. And it's another reason why there's no point in putting things that aren't dissolved into the volumetric flask, because it makes it quite difficult to dissolve them, because it's very hard to stir anything in there. So once you have that done and you're happy with it, then put your flask back down on the bench and you can take the stopper out. Again, we saw last week how to use a burette, so fill your burette, make sure the tap is full, and then make your first reading. If you are looking at it from too high up, like you can see here, then you're gonna get a reading that is an underestimation because you'll too, be too far up the scale. And if you're looking at it from below, then you're gonna get an overestimation of what your reading should be because you're gonna be too far down the scale. So you have to make sure that you are level with the scale when you're making your reading. And estimate between the smallest divisions on the scale as you normally would when taking a reading. Next up, we're gonna fill our conical flask. So when we do our titration, we release liquid from the burette into the conical flask and the conical flask should contain a fixed volume of uh, one of our solutions. So you'll see here that we very carefully transfer exactly 25 milliliters. If you've got liquid on the outside of your pipette, you'll want to clean it before you start putting it into the conical flask. That way you can avoid inadvertently transferring material with the outside of the pipette, which would throw off your final reading. It goes without saying that accuracy is paramount because we're aiming for our three titers to be within 100 microliters or 0.1 of a mil. It's also important to note that we never put our pipette into the communal bottle and that we've poured our solution into a separate beaker. That's really bad lab etiquette because we risk contaminating the bottle for everybody else. Also, if you were using something that was in a volumetric flask, you'd pour that into a beaker first because it's quite difficult to pipette straight out of a volumetric flask and you're likely to break something. Once we've transferred our 25 mil into our conical flask, then we're gonna add in our indicator. Don't forget, because if there's no indicator, you can't see when the end point is. So in goes the indicator, one drop, two drops, and give it a little swirl to make sure that the indicator is mixed in. And at this stage then, we're gonna start our titration. So in our titration, we're adding one liquid into another until the reaction has completely finished. When we're doing that, we want to make sure that we're measuring precisely all of the liquid that goes from the burette into the conical flask. So we take our initial reading, write that down, and then we start to add our material into the conical flask. Again, just like last week, left hand on the tap, right hand uh, agitating the mixture in the conical flask. So we're adding our material in and we'll notice the color change 
But initially the color change will be transient and will disappear again and our end point is when we get a solid permanent color change. And it's worth thinking conceptually about what's happening at that end point. It means that every molecule of nitric acid in our conical flask that we put in there with the pipette has reacted with one molecule of sodium hydroxide that has come out of the burette. And since we know that an equal number of molecules have reacted, well we can use our concentrations to work out how much has reacted and therefore how many molecules were in the number of milliliters that came out of the burette. We'll come back to the calculations in another video, but it's worth bearing in mind. In the meantime, we're doing our first titration. So this is a pretty rough titration because we have no idea where the end point is and we can't go slowly enough to make it precise the entire way. The next time we know where our end point is going to be roughly, so we go 90% of the way there and then slow right down and go drip by drip by drip till we get to our end point precisely. So the first time you do it, you just do a rough titration and get an approximate value. And then the next time you go maybe 90% of the way to that value and then you slowly uh, work your way to the end point. And you can see here, and if you do it right, it is possible to get it to within one drop. So one drop is gonna change your solution from being perfectly colorless to a solid pink color. This time though, we're just doing our rough titration. So we get to the pink color at the end and then we stop. And when we get the pink color and it's a solid pink color, we wanna let it sit for five or 10 seconds just to make sure that there isn't any delayed reaction. And so that's given us our rough estimate of where our end point is gonna be. And so what we need to do now, armed with that information, is do the titration at least three more times. In order to get a precise value, you need to get three titers within 0.1 of a milliliter each. So within 100 microliters. Um, and that accuracy is very much achievable. So we've reset the entire thing and we're gonna do another titration. And this time we're just gonna look at a few of the finer features of how this titration is gonna work. When you start initially, you wanna keep an eye on the burette and initially the liquid's gonna flow out of the burette quite quickly because we know roughly where we need to get to. So for the first part, we're just gonna empty out uh, the liquid until we get to where we think is 90% of the way there. And then we're gonna slow it right down. It's worth having a look at what happens. So on the left, you can see I've slowed it right down uh, time-wise and you can see that it's possible to make single drops come out of the end of the burette. And one of those drops is enough when you get to the end point to make the difference between colorless and pink. The other thing that I want you to notice here is that as we go through this, sometimes small drops can splash back up again. So here you can see a drop splash back up against the side of the flask if you look really closely. And those are again, since we're down to the uh, 100 microliter level of accuracy, are enough to throw off your titration. So when you finally get to the end of your titration and you've done it single drop by single drop by single drop, what you need to do is just double check that all of the material has reacted in your flask. The way we do that is by washing down the sides of the flask with some distilled water. It doesn't really matter if we add in a little bit more distilled water because more distilled water isn't gonna add in any more acid and base and isn't gonna affect our endpoint as long as we don't go totally mad with the distilled water. So we're just gonna wash down the sides of the flask and make sure that we haven't left any material up on the edges. So we've reached our endpoint just about now. We can see one more drop maybe is gonna get us there and we get a solid pink color that doesn't go away. We leave it to stand for a few seconds once we're sure. So that one last drop did it, it's standing on the bench and then we just wanna make sure we're gonna wash down the edges with a little bit, a little bit of distilled water. If the pink color does disappear, then you'll have to add one more drop from your burette and that should be enough to return the pink color. At this point, what's happened? Well, we've added in enough sodium hydroxide from our burette to react with all of the nitric acid that was in the 25 mil that we transferred in with pipette in the first place into the conical flask. So the calculations come next, but they're in a separate video. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, ask them in the lab or you can post them in questions and answers or post them below. That's all for now. Bye.